Hi guys. Okay, we're here in my house. <laughs> we're about to make some chocolate. Tell me if you can hear the noise. Wow, okay, Facebook is telling me I can put on a mask to give myself a fun look. Maybe next time. <laughs> I don't, don't want to waste your guys' time right now. Okay, here we go. Let me flip the camera around so you can see. Why is the lighting so weird right now? A eh, little better? I don't know. Okay, that's not the point. Um, okay, let me show you what I have on the table. Okay, here we go. See, we have my coconut oil. We have my bowl for stirring stuff. We have these little cupcake tins with paper in it ready so that we can make the peanut butter cups. And hold on, is this going? Am I live? Yeah, okay, I think so. Okay, and I have my cacao powder, my peanut butter for the peanut butter cups, my maple syrup, and pretty much everything I need. Okay, so, okay, here I am. I just wanted to explain a little bit why I wanted to do this. <laughs> um, I know that everyone loves chocolate, myself included, and um, I wanted to demystify a little bit about why we have so many cravings for chocolate, especially in the nighttime. Um, I have so many people that tell me, oh, you know, I'm pretty good with my, like, my food during the day, and then the night comes and I just become like cookie monster, and I go from one thing to the next in my pantry, and I just kind of can't stop, and I don't know what happens to me. So there's three main things going on when that happens to you. And can you guys just like give me a thumbs up or a smiley face or a heart if you can hear me? Because I, I just want to make sure that someone's, <laughs> that it's going through. Um, yeah? Okay. Great. Um, is that better? Now? Okay. I'm just going to hope it is. Okay. So the three main reasons that that happens is because, number one, that in order to fall asleep, we need the uh, mineral magnesium. And magnesium is actually the highest mineral deficiency in America. And it also um, is not only deficient in us, but it's deficient in our foods. Like if we, spinach, for example, has a lot of magnesium. But if we eat the same amount of spinach that our grandmother would eat, we would get like about a third to a fifth only of the magnesium in it because our soils are depleted compared to 100 years ago or even 50 years ago. However, sorry, my hair's in my face. <laughs> um, however, magnesium is very rich in, in chocolate and the chocolate that it's richest in is when it's made with raw cacao powder, like this one. That's not the only brand that I recommend. Pretty, I've never seen one that didn't look good. That's just um, a good one that I found for a really good price, so I got it um, on Amazon. Um, ah, sorry, feeling flustered. Okay, anyways, so magnesium is really rich in cocoa, but specifically in raw cacao. Raw cacao and cocoa are pretty much the same, except for it's the cocoa bean before they roast it, and so all of the minerals stay inside. So when your body needs those minerals to fall asleep, the reason why you're craving them at night is because you need them in order to sleep. Um, okay, let me just show you it again. See there? Raw cacao powder. Let me see if it has any of the nutrition on the back. Uh, not of that part. Okay. Anyways, that's exciting. Um, the other big reason that we wind up having cravings at night <laughs> is because I'm just sitting on the floor now at the end of my table. <laughs> Um, because um, a lot of us get super busy throughout the day and then at the end of the day is the first time that we realize we're actually hungry and so it's not that we have these endless cravings it's that we've been running around from our job to our class to taking care of our kids to do our extracurricular whatever the things that make our make us busy and it's only at the end of the day when the house is quiet that we finally take the time or have the quietness to realize like oh my gosh I'm actually really hungry and so it's not necessarily, again, that you're crazy and you can't control yourself as much as like, did you really eat today? Because a lot of times people don't. I have a lot of clients that come in and when I ask them, okay, like, what do you eat on an average day? They can't really tell me. They say, oh, I have 
mm, sometimes I have this for breakfast and mm, I don't know, I kind of maybe have a snack later and then I don't know and then I do this and people don't really know what they're eating and that tells me usually they're not eating enough or they're just kind of eating junk and crap as they kind of go through their day. So that's another big reason that we get a lot of cravings at night. The third huge reason that we get cravings, especially for sweets at night, is because we all crave sweetness in our life. And in our culture, it's not really spoken about and it's not really so encouraged to have these open and real conversations about what brings sweetness to your life, what makes you feel deeply satisfied and grateful and connected to yourself and connected to your purpose and all of the other things that give sweetness to life's experience, um, we don't really talk about so much. Oh, look at my hair being crazy. Um, but it's totally socially, socially accessible to just go to, you know, a dessert place and have a chocolate croissant or two or three with your friend. So even though you might be like, oh, why am I doing this? It's still socially acceptable. Whereas um, it might be a little bit harder of a change from your normal routine to say, I'm going to go, you know, sit on the top of a mountain and read my favorite book or listen to my favorite music or write because really I'm a poet, even though I haven't written in five years. Um, and that very often is the, is the true sweetness that we're searching for that again, hits us at bedtime before we're trying to go to bed and kind of all the truths about us the same way that our body needs magnesium to fall asleep, our soul also has a sense of needs and complacency in order to be willing to call the day the day and, and may, let it be over. So those are the kind of the three angles that I recommend um, starting with when you're analyzing yourself and trying to figure out like what's going on, why do I have these crazy cravings at night that kind of come out of nowhere, don't stop to kind of realize that they're not really coming out of nowhere. It's because you have needs and you have needs on a cellular level and you have needs on an emotional level and you have needs on just a regular food throughout the day level. So it's, it's not as um, mysterious as it may seem. So let me now flip the camera around and we're gonna start to make the chocolate. The chocolate I'm gonna make, um, I'm gonna first make it and turn it into the chocolate bark. And then I'm gonna um, use that same base of chocolate to turn it into the chocolate peanut butter cups. Okay, here we go. You know what? I'm gonna have my eight year old help me. Shala, can you come here for a second? Mr. Helpful. Okay, can you just hold the camera on the bowl so people can see what I'm doing? Yeah. Okay. I have my measuring cups here, but. Um, you don't really need to use measuring cups. I mean, you definitely are invited to, but I often don't <laughs> if I can't find them or whatever. Okay, so I'm doing one cup of coconut oil, just pretty much what I have left, so that's great. Um, whew, look at that, how it fills up the bowl. Okay, if you're concerned, hi there. <laughs> If you're concerned about the fat and you're like, oh no, but that's so much fat, don't worry about it. Coconut oil is a great fat and helps you burn energy and also is very satisfying. So when you have it, it's similar to the cocoa that, the, to the rocket cow that you're actually filling a need that you have and you can't eat a thousand pounds of it. You know, you, there's only so much you can eat. Okay, I'm gonna do, this is a quarter cup, so I'm gonna, oh, how should I do it? I'm gonna do, Two of these because I'm going to do half a cup of cacao in there. Bring it on. Two. Okay. As you can see, I didn't I didn't really measure perfectly, and it's fine. It doesn't matter. But this part, I'm usually not a stickler for rules at all. But this part actually does matter. That. Um, that you get the oil mixed in with the cocoa before you add in the sweetener. If you add it in all together, then the sweetener mixes with the cocoa and then it won't mix with the oil. Not that that's ever happened to me. <laughs> that was a joke, it's happened to me. That's how I learned. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. See, it's mixing all together. And in a second, I'm gonna add in the maple syrup, which is our sweetener. If you guys have any questions so far, feel free to ask. Okay, 
Here's my maple syrup. Um, this one is grade A, but if you ever have access to grade B or grade C, I actually recommend that more because it's less um, filtered and has more of the minerals and more of the mapley taste in it and therefore is healthier and won't affect your um, blood sugar as much. Anyways, it shouldn't have such an effect on your blood sugar right now because the way that you're having it with the cocoa or the cacao and the coconut oil in particular also uh, um, helps keep your blood sugar stable because fat is really good to keep your blood sugar stable, um, which is basically like the opposite of sugar. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Let me just show you what we've got so far. Okay, that is our... Um, Better. <laughs> That's our like liquid chocolate. Hi, looks pretty good so far, right? Not so hard. Very doable. You know, if your kids help you and they pour in a little too much or a little too little, it's fine. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of ladle it in to this. I put in parchment paper. I didn't really measure. I just, the only reason I do that is that I can get it off the bottom of the thing once it hardens. I'm actually, you know, I'm going to try and pour it. Here we go. Yeah, okay. you, you film again. Here we go. Mmm, <laughs> says the eight-year-old looking forward to having this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's the bottom part. And then I'm going to just shake on top. See, I have slivered almonds. They're not organic. What can you do? <laughs> yeah, because this is chocolate bark. Not really chocolate. Oh. Um, another time we'll make it plain. And there we go. I couldn't find the cashews. I know that we have them, but I think my two-year-old was walking around eating them. So instead, I'm just going to add some coconut flakes on top. Here. Can you guys see that? See how I'm not really measuring? Again, I gave measurements in the original recipe and I'll post that underneath the video. But um, I'm just pointing out like how forgiving this is. That you really um, doesn't have to. So again, um, I couldn't find an organic I orange remember, I remember. when I make this. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't find an organic orange, but we found organic tangerine. So I'm just using it. You can't smell it, but... I can. It smells really good, and I actually really love the taste of um, orange and chocolate together. So I, when I first made it, I like cut it up so that it would look really pretty. But I find that it's pretty enough <laughs> if I just rip it, and it just tastes really good. And that's why I make it. I like the peel in it, and so I'm just kind of dropping it around here. Again, you could th toss it in more nonchalantly. Um, I find that when that happens, it winds up always going on the other side and then um, it doesn't look as nice because you're only seeing the white part instead of the orange part. But I'm just gonna call this a day in one second. We're gonna put it in the fridge. And uh, I'm not in the fridge, in the freezer, and let it, let it harden. Okay. Actually, you know what, I have some goji berries. I'm gonna go grab them. Hold them one second. Shalom, you can tell them your favorite part about the chocolate. About the chocolate? But I love the chocolate because Don't. You guys saw my crazy, messy kitchen, huh? <laughs> I hired a, a videographer. Okay. Okay, here's my goji berries. They, they, I left them out, so they're not so red anymore, so they're not adding much color. But I can't really see them. You can't see them, but I'm just... Yeah, here they are. They look like all, uh, raisins. They do look like raisins today. Okay, but there you go. That was it. Super complicated, right? Anyways, you'll see. I'm going to put it in the uh, freezer now. In about 10 or 15 minutes, it should be all hard, and we can start to rip it apart. <coughs> okay. Um, hold on. Shalom, you stay here. Yeah. You stay here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're going to start. Can you fill this up? Uh. Why you hold it or no? Those. 
Yeah. Like so, this is how we do the peanut butter cups at the same time. Oh, it's dripping. I don't care. Okay, one spoonful in each. There we go. to this one. Which one? Right here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I'm going to put both of these. See, this is just in the freezer. This one and this one. In about 10 minutes, I'm going to take them out and um, they'll be ready. This one, to add the peanut butter cups to it, I'm just going to, when it comes out, I'm going to add a glob of peanut butter and then just cover it again with chocolate and put it back in the freezer. But I'm going to end the live now because I don't want you guys just waiting I don't want you guys just like waiting for 10 minutes while they're in the freezer. Um, if you want, um, I could take a video, but I, I think that it's pretty clear and you can see it's really simple. That's my whole point of doing this. I just want to show you guys like how doable it is. You don't need to be a fancy chef. You don't need to have a big fancy kitchen. You don't need to have like fancy stirring ingredients or anything. Um, you can just do it and it's that easy. So, okay. Hope you guys enjoy. Talk to you soon. Bye.